Of course. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, again. Uh, so this, this presentation is just going to look at some of the capacity building exercises that we undertook as part of the first phase, or the initial phase of the CMA, and um, some of the outputs and, and benefits and shortfalls that we uh, found along the way. So yeah, just talking about the capacity building activities under phase one and some of the benefits and shortfalls of, of those activities. So in terms of the purpose of the capacity building activities, it was all about developing skills and abilities at the national level to enable the development of both national and regional atlases. So it was all very much capacity building at the technical level to build atlases. So starting from the gathering of information, the, um, uh, the processing of that information, the adding value to it, um, the developing products, and then integrating those products within an, an atlas system or an atlas as well as providing metadata and having metadata catalogs, it was all geared along those levels. So we had a series, so you could basically break down how we did the capacity building into two uh, categories. There were data management courses, which were all about where to find ocean data. They were very focused on uh, oceanographic data initially, so that's, you know, physical oceanography, chemical oceanography. Where to find it, what formats it comes in, what it can be used for, uh, how to process this information to produce data layers. So we use a number of different products from Saga GIS, which is, open, uh, which is a free uh, GIS tool to, you know, whatever you wanted to use. Uh, how to store this information uh, in spatially in both, uh, say, like a, a, a geo server. So you, you just get the shape file, you put it in a geo server, you style it. And also how to put uh, spatial information within a spatial geo database like Postgres SQL. Um, for faster data retrieval. And then we had some atlas specific, so you know, specific to the Tatchy atlases themselves. Um, so we had a few courses um, along those lines and it was all about, you know, the fundamentals of what atlases can do and how they function, uh, how to program the, the, the websites, or a website to actually call for um, a, a map image from a, a web map service, um, how to configure the backend so software, so how to uh, process, how to put information into geo server and how to style it, etc. And then how to create metadata and have that metadata be shared on the web. So the first course we had was a basic uh, ocean data management course. Uh, we had lectures from, or the lecturers for that were uh, both Murray Brown and, and Greg Reed, who's here. And we used the, o the, the ocean, Deep, ocean Teacher Digital Library for that before it was the Ocean Teacher, what's it called, Academy now? Ocean Teacher Academy, so it's an earlier uh, incarnation of Ocean Teacher. And we did a bunch of stuff, which I'm not going to go through, uh, but it was basically all about um, where to find information, uh, how to get information from different catalogs like the World Ocean Database, at the time it was WOD05, uh, how to export uh, products into Ocean Data View and get generate products from that as well, some of the fundamentals of GIS, etc. Uh, the next course we had was a data mining and, and data simulation course. So taking this information um, and processing it further. So for that, again, it was Greg Reed, Murray Brown, and Linda, um, who were uh, lecturers for that course, again, using the Ocean Teacher. And reviewed software tools, methodologies for data processing. You know, started looking at how to put information in the FTP so it can be extracted later for different applications generating raster images using different types of software for that, and generating TIFF files to be in, input into the atlas as the raster images, uh, formatting vector information, generating shape files, um, talking about net metadata standards and the different types of metadata that you can create, discovery metadata and um, like catalog metadata, and, um, and looking at different uh, data acquisition and usage policies that we might want to develop as part of the atlas. Then we had another uh, training course in, in Belgium. I, I would say this would be like the kind of last um, of, a, of, of that particular series of training courses that was very much geared towards Atlas development. Again, Gregory Murray Brown and Yassine was also a lecturer at, at that uh, meeting, also using Ocean Teacher. So at the time, we were, we were using a, a Minnesota Map Server as the engine as the WMS engine for 
for the atlas. Um, so we were doing a lot of um, uh, data, uh, manipulation of both the spatial information within map server and building the web atlases based on a map server platform. And that, is, that, that changed over the course of the atlas program. Um, but we also looked at, you know, really how to incorporate different layers and in different ways within an atlas application to target specific user groups. Then in 2011, we had a, a, a course very much for people who were identified as Atlas developers. So it was a relatively no, a very small group, but say there were eight or nine Atlas, Atlas um, participants. Uh, the actual core development group was only five or six who were actually going to be hands-on building uh, the Atlas both at the regional level and national levels. Um, so we had a, a, a lecture from a, a company called the Open Technology Group, and we really focused on two things, on uh, spatially enabled databases like Postgres, SQL, and we also, and the, the, the types, of, uh, in, uh, types of considerations you have to make for putting spatial information within a, <coughs> a, a, a spatial relational database, as well as looking at how to use uh, Open Layers, which is a, a JavaScript library, to um, to create applications which will uh, pull uh, spatial information from uh, like GeoServer and different types of uh, web map web map services. Then, just me, I went to uh, uh, to the offices of, of Liz in Belgium, where um, IOD, where IODEs. Office is also located. Uh, we had let, I had some discussions with Francisco Hernandez of Liz, and we very much focused on this, some of the technical issues to do with the actual app, Atlas application itself. We um, incorporated parts of the Viz, of the Vliz um, uh, geographic um, library for uh, the, uh, the code library for for some of their atlases within the CMAs Atlas as well. And that really improved the performance of the Atlas, the abilities it had, the functionality. You could do queries at that stage. So it became a lot better. And then we had in December, which was the last um, uh, capacity building exercise uh, for the first phase of the CMA, we actually had a, a, an Atlas creation workshop in Belgium. So we actually came together and actually created national atlases over the course of a week. So we went through a series of lectures. Um, so I did some of the lecturing. And we looked at the, the components of the CMA platform, the GeoNetwork, GeoServer, the open layers, uh, how to manage spatial data in GeoServer. We got very much into the nitty gritty of that, how to upload, how to uh, style layers, how to manage metadata in GeoNetwork and make sure it's published appropriately. And then we actually got down to the nitty gritty of actually building uh, marine analysis using both the CMA and the Vliz uh, code libraries. So after all that effort, what, what did we have? So we had a main CMA website, which is just an HTML website, basically, which just uh, gives you some information on the project itself. We have a web map server that's up and running, which is sharing the, the geospatial information that's powering the Atlas, Atlas application itself. We have the metadata catalog, geo network, that's up and running. Uh, we have a, a basic mapping application for the regional atlas, uh, which you can go to and play with, uh, which is one of the, the um, I would say one of the most advanced of the atlas products that we have uh, produced in terms of its functionality and what it contains. And then we have a series of uh, national atlas products that we also generated as part of that last workshop that you can go to and visit. and. So you know, so we've developed. So so we can show that we have the capability to actually develop um, Atlas products. They're not super shiny and, and well polished, but we did build a lot of capacity in terms of how to actually build uh, Atlas products and how to um, and the considerations that need to be made to actually develop Atlas type applications. So that capacity building within the region uh, was clearly a benefit because uh, different people in, in of that group. Um, more of us are starting to develop Atlas applications in our own offices uh, back home, uh, very specific to certain needs. So all that capacity building did have a, a net benefit. 
So, in terms of the benefits, so for the countries that took part in that initial phase of the CMA, uh, built a whole lot of knowledge, uh, became very skilled at learning where to find information, where to find spatial information, what to look for, how to manipulate this information. So, you, know, you get it in net CDF, you get it in tables, you get it in shape files, how to manipulate this data to actually produce layers. Um, all the different technologies available to actually both uh, create, manage, publish geospatial information. So that's going from things like QGIS, um, if you want a free uh, desktop GIS product, to GeoServer and GeoNetwork, which are the actual the Atlas backbone type softwares. Uh, the importance <coughs> of metadata, metadata records. I mean, everybody says it's uh, the metadata is important, but until you really start working and trying to understand the the usability factor of of different uh, spatial data and information, it doesn't really hit home. Uh, but over this process, yeah, it really becomes clear that you need to know the pedigree of, of data sets. So that was very helpful. And where to find information on all this? So Ocean, the Ocean Teacher Library and the, the Ocean Teacher Academy now, um, that's where most of our training information came from, almost all of it. So, it was very, uh, so we now have a much better understanding of where to find information about how to process data sets, how to create atlases, et cetera. And we also, um, through both uh, stakeholder interactions and just our own experiences, we, we, we definitely got a better understanding of the utility of atlases to serve different needs. So in terms of the challenges that we um, came to grips with as part of that whole process, is that for the actual application of this knowledge, the actual uh, for capacity building to really um, to to really be useful and to be impactful, uh, if it's not part of your core function in your job in your institution, then it's hard for that capacity to actually be applied. And that I mean, we've talked about this before, but if 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 it's not your priority, if it's not part of your daily work, it's hard for you to maintain the skills that you've developed over time. Uh, because other things in the office take priority, and that's a that was a key uh, key re a key realization, and something we just have to deal with within the region because we have limited capacity, there's limited specialization, and it's it's um it's not clear how we're going to overcome that except from ex except for the nat the natural development of different organizations coming to the realization that spatial data management is a key component of their of their operation, and then putting aside resources to to manage that. And also that the implementation of the uh, development, the actual development effort, actually coding, takes a long time. It takes a lot of uh, capacity building. It takes um, people to be actually be able to, to, to set aside time and resources to actually do that effort. So if that can be farmed out to somebody else, then that is probably preferable um, because we are we are not software developers. We're scientists. So if we can avoid Doing that again, I think that would be uh, beneficial to the success of this project. And that, of course, staff turnover can negate the actual impact of capacity building. So if you invest a lot of training in somebody and they leave the job, then obviously that capacity building effort has been somewhat wasted. So you have to look at ways to um, maintain the knowledge base that's generated from capacity building. But I think Ocean Teacher goes a long way to fulfill that because the information is still there in terms of the, the, the information you need to actually build skills again. So if you need to train someone, you, you know you can go to the Ocean Teacher website and basically conduct that training yourself if you have that background or they can self-teach uh, once they know where the information is. So that's it. So that's, uh, if there are any questions, uh, Marsha. We have, sorry, 